Here we have past versus present. And in a lot of ways, the newest entry in the note line is just a further perfecting of everything that came before it. Hey, it's Joshua Gar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. The recently released Galaxy Note 3 not only takes on a different design philosophy than its predecessor, it also takes on a different approach to its main defining feature, the S Pen. We start off with design, in which the updates to the Galaxy Note 3 mark a pretty new beginning for Samsung. The Note 2 carried on what became a long-standing tradition of Samsung's material choice, glossy plastic, and thus was a pretty fingerprint prone and at times quite slippery device in the hand. It also took on a more rounded look much like the Galaxy S3, only its larger size with that 5.5 inch screen thus made it one of the first popular bigger smartphones. Nonetheless, everything else was pretty much classic Samsung with the button layout and the removable back cover. The S Pen on the Note 2 had to take on the rounded shape of the phone's back, which meant that its rear portion had to be contoured to that curve, and thus could only be inserted in that one particular way. Fast forward a year and Samsung finally decided to change the game up a little bit. The first thing you notice about the Note 3 is the new material choice. The back cover is no longer of a glossy plastic and is now textured, and it tries to mimic leather especially in the etching found around the edges. The general shape is also no longer pebble-like, and is generally more decisive with its flatter sides and overall flatter profile. This new material solves the fingerprinting problem and makes for a phone that looks pretty great even after some heavy usage. The button layout is still the same, and even if the screen is larger than the Note 2's by 0.2 inches, it is just about the same footprint as its predecessor while becoming even lighter. In the hand, it's surprisingly nimble for a big phone. The S Pen was also given the same treatment. It is lighter than before, but also has been given a more symmetrical shape, so it doesn't have to be oriented one specific way to be inserted into its slot. It's hard to find pretty much anyone these days who are still into the glossy plastic. For the most part, people have grown tired of its repetition. That's why the Note 3 marks such a nice beginning, because even if it's not technically that drastic of a change, it is still very welcome. Overall, it just feels so much better and helps solidify it as a true evolution for the Note line. The display experience has beefed up from the Note 2, with the Note 3 ascending to the standards that we've gotten used to in the top tier. The Note 2 has a 5.5 inch 720p display that was a good performer and in plenty of ways still is. The signature Samsung saturation was definitely a factor but also showed the capabilities of the Super AMOLED display. For many people this screen meant much easier to read material and a good media viewing experience. Now compare this to the next evolution. The Super AMOLED pen tile display of the Galaxy Note 3 has been brought up to a full HD 1080p experience and is among one of the best screens available on a smartphone today. Despite an increase to 5.7 inches in size, it handles just about as well as its predecessor due to its similar footprint, which is a great feat. Saturation levels of the Super AMOLED screen remain pretty high, but in this new version of TouchWiz, these color preferences are actually customizable. The higher pixel density makes for everything from text to media fit even better on the large screen, making it seem like a bloated touch whiz was made for this size of a screen. Pretty much no matter how you put it, the Galaxy Note 3 display experience is just so much better than was found on the Galaxy Note 2. While the Note 2 display isn't terrible even by today's standards, it just isn't as good as the new hotness. We continue the trend of the evolution with the performance section. It's no surprise that the Galaxy Note 3 gets the highly upgraded specs, having been released one year later than the Note 2, which came with the Exynos Quad-Core 4412 package clocked in at 1.6GHz, the Mali 400MP, and 2GB of RAM. This is definitely still a respectable package even today, and performs quite well. Any lag or stutter that was or is still perceived in the Note 2 could be just as much an issue with the older version of TouchWiz as it may be with the processing package. For plenty of users today, the Galaxy Note 2 continues to perform the way they need it to, reliably more than anything, so its abilities to get work done is far from in question. But then we get to the Galaxy Note 3 which basically wins the spec war today by having the current best package while offering even more than the competition. This version of the smartphone packs the Snapdragon 800, the processor clocked in at a whopping 2.3GHz and is backed by the also updated Adreno 330. Perhaps the most jarring change is the inclusion of 3GB of RAM, which is a first for the Android space. All of this power is necessary for the new S Pen functionality but also for the sheer multitasking that the Note 3 is capable of. Personally, I have yet to encounter any lag or stutter that truly slowed me down, and with an updated TouchWiz, I have only found a little bit of slowdown when apps needed to load information during their initiation. Once again, the Note 3 simply trumps its predecessor by being the true next step for the Note line. While the Note 2 might still be great for people who don't demand too much from their S Pen enabled smartphone, what the Note 3 offers is just very difficult to dismiss. 
At their core, the key elements that make the Galaxy Note line attractive to users remains in either device. The removable back cover still implies removable batteries and expandable storage, of which the Note 3 begins at 32GB while the Note 2 began at 16. In the case of the Note 2, it was all about popularizing the S Pen, which went from being a niche tool to becoming a part of multitudes of users' experiences. While many people use the Note 2 without even touching the S Pen, it still became part of the general lexicon for every user. The Note 3 would then be the next step forward for the S Pen, and it truly is. But then the game changed somewhat when the Galaxy S4 came into the picture. Samsung put so many new navigation features via sensors and extra add-ons that many wondered if the Note line would benefit from them as well. Their wishes were granted. The Note 3 includes not only the S Pen enhancements, but also benefits from all of the same sensors that originally came in the S4. This includes everything for air gestures, air view, the IR blaster, and even measuring your general surroundings with S Health. While we'll get into the S Pen enhancements more in a little bit, all of these non-S Pen additions make one thing very clear. Samsung knows that you may not use the S Pen, and if you don't, here are all of the extra ways you can use your Galaxy Note 3. When it comes to the camera, the Galaxy Note 2 continued the tradition initially started by the Galaxy S3, whose optics were quite well received. This 8 megapixel shooter is not the kind of top tier offering we're used to seeing anymore, but that doesn't keep it from still pleasing its users even one whole year later. The app itself is pretty simplistic, with icons taking up a fair amount of space in the viewfinder, and aside from best modes and HDR, there aren't too many extra functions that add to your otherwise classical smartphone photography experience. Much like with the sensors and the hardware, the release of the Galaxy S4 also inspired the camera upgrade in the Galaxy Note 3. The 13 megapixel shooter in the Note 3 is very much like the one found in the Galaxy S4, right down to the app. Features such as the new drama and eraser modes are available in the Note 3, allowing for plenty of options for any shutter bug. In video, anyone that really wants to get a great enhancement can look to the Snapdragon version of the Note 3 for 4K video capture. Overall, the quality of the Note 3 camera is a proper update, trumping the Note 2 not only in its picture sizes, but also in the level of detail and color reproduction. Again, the Note 3 just performs better than its predecessor. All of these upgrades are expected in a new version, and so far the move forward is felt throughout. Finally, we have the software, in which at first glance you may not immediately see the difference. This is because TouchWiz, by and large, has not really changed, and quite frankly is in need of a generally updated look. That being said, the TouchWiz in the Note 2 definitely looks more bloated due to the lower resolution of the screen, and without the S4-esque navigation additions, it is largely a classical experience added onto by the S Pen. Speaking of the S Pen, its main usage in the Note 2 was in general handwriting and pretty simplistic clipping. If you wanted to use the S Pen for more contextual tasks, a quick gesture brought up the Quick command, which required the use of symbols in order to trigger specific functions. Essentially, all of these functions were reimagined in the Galaxy Note 3, which not only added in the navigation features, but also looks much better on a 1080p display. While everything definitely looks bigger on this 5.7-inch screen, they aren't overly or obnoxiously large, keeping everything easy to view without becoming eyesores. S Pen usage has become much more intuitive with the addition of the Air Command menu, triggered by pressing the Pen button while hovering over the screen. Action Memo is essentially the updated version of Quick Command, only all handwriting can be recognized and then plugged into the appropriate application. Clipping has also been enhanced with the Scrapbooker and even the ScreenWrite, which are only a couple more of the enhancements that are baked in. For all that the S Pen can do on the Galaxy Note 3, you can see my future focus video basically outlining it all. Ultimately, TouchWiz doesn't look like it has changed a whole lot, but in the Galaxy Note 3, it is capable of so much more, and that is where its appeal definitely is. It should be obvious by now that the Galaxy Note 3 is just leaps and bounds better than its predecessor, but all of that also comes with a price. While the Galaxy Note 2, now a year older, can be found for $500 or sometimes less unlocked and $199 on two-year contracts via US carriers, the Galaxy Note 3 gets the much more premium price of $800 unlocked and $299 on contract. And so, there you have it. Basically, it comes down to the price for your choice. What this Versus has taught us, however, is that if you go for the Note 2 because of its better price, you really do get what you pay for. The Note 2 does provide a good, big smartphone experience still, and decent S Pen functions, but clearly, it pales in comparison to all that the Note 3 is capable of. Personally, I do think that if you can put down the extra money for the Note 3, it is worth every single penny, because it can do a hell of a lot. And even better, it can do them pretty damn well. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. If for whatever reason you still haven't seen my Galaxy Note 3 review, you can find it in a link right over on the side. 
And like I mentioned before, you can get a more in-depth look at the S Pen and everything it can do on the Galaxy Note 3 in a future focus video that is also linked over on the side. Stay tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage. We have everything from weekly shows to reviews to versus comparisons to future focus videos. We've got a lot here at the channel. So make sure you keep it tuned here because we are your source for all things Android.